Do you want to do more than follow orders? Think outside of the box and manifest your dreams? Then you've come to the right show. Welcome to the award-winning podcast, Holding Down the Fort by U.S. Vet Wealth. I'm your host, Jen Amos, a gold star daughter, veteran spouse, and entrepreneur. For season nine, we continue our partnership with the Rosie Network to highlight motivational stories of personal growth, financial awareness, and autonomy in our military community. We're also excited to continue showcasing our partnership with Blue Water Advisors. Now, let's get started. Welcome, welcome. I hope you're having a great fall season. I sure am because it's cooler. I said this in like a past episode already, but I'm genuinely enjoying it. When you had a very, very, very hot summer with an injury, you really appreciate one, when you're recovered and two, when the weather works for you, not against you. So I'm grateful. I'm counting my blessings. So this episode, I will not be here. I mean, other than this very moment and in the outro, this episode, we are showcasing our partnership with Mike Wallace. You were familiar with him in the last two seasons or the last season, season eight specifically. We partnered up with him. I mean, he's a brand partner of ours here at US Vet Wealth, and it just felt very fitting to share the replays of him and Scott, my husband, talking about career progression, which is all about, you know, finding employment in post-military life. One thing I realized about hosting the show is that it's good to have a variety of inspirational stories about entrepreneurship and employment because I've come to understand (laughs) that... You know, I've just lived this entrepreneurial life for so long and I love it a lot. I love this lifestyle that I sort of assumed that everyone else would love it too. But I recognize, I recognize that everyone has different priorities and that employment is equally as necessary as entrepreneurship. It's just various ways of making a living and providing for your family. So last season, we introduced Mike Wallace and Blue Water Advisors, and it was great. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I hope you did too. Anyway, we're bringing him back this time for just once this season. So I hope you all are okay with that. Of course, if you always want to watch replays or even real-time live shows with Mike and Scott, you can check out our company's YouTube channel. That's YouTube youtube.com forward slash at USVW TV. That's US as in United States, USVW as in Vet Wealth TV, USVW TV. And there you'll be able to see replays of live shows, live streams that Scott and Mike Wallace have done. If you want to listen in more on getting tips and tricks for career progression, uh, specifically for military retirees seeking employment in post-military life, highly recommend that you check those out. This season, we're just going to feature him once. I think that we need to have that balance. You know, we featured it, showcased him a lot last season. And this one, I felt like this, this one episode, because we're only featuring him once, I felt like this was a very fitting episode to showcase, you know, on this show because. In this one, Scott and Mike discuss, by the way, I know that the last two episodes ago, we had another Mike. So just to be clear, Mike Seabolt works with us. He's our life insurance case design specialist at US Vet Wealth. Mike Wallace, so Seabolt and Walt Wallace, he is our, he's a partner of ours at Blue Water Advisors. So different Mikes, okay? You got Mike Seabolt and Mike Wallace. In this episode with Mike Wallace from Blue Water Advisors, Scott and Mike discuss various aspects of military retirement, financial security, and career transitions for veterans. They emphasize the importance of building a war chest, which you can hear more about, of course, in this episode, managing post-military income streams, and navigating financial uncertainties, such as market downturns and economic changes. The discussion includes insights on making informed decisions about retirement funds, job security, and the impacts of industry fluctuations on career opportunities. They also highlight the significance of continuous networking and staying adaptable in the civilian job market. So if any of that sounds of interest to you, I hope you enjoy this conversation with my husband, Scott, and Mike Wallace. I love taking these times to just showcase them so that I can take a break and focus on other initiatives. So thank you, thank you all for allowing me to take that break. I hope you enjoy this episode and I'll chat with you later. Enjoy. Enjoy. 
All right, we are live. Welcome back to another episode of uh, Take an E. I'm Scott Tucker here with Mike Wallace from Blue Water Advisors. Good morning. Yeah, you can follow us. May I always forget to say this. Hey, make sure uh, you're following us both on LinkedIn, but also on YouTube. We go live with this whenever we go live on our Military Retirement Blue Tube channel. So go ahead, head over there, subscribe. I've got tons of other videos about military retirement, all the insight that insights that my, Mike has shared on this show. And my wife, Jen, has broken those down into, you know, other videos. And we're going to have, you know, more stuff coming out there as well. So subscribe there. One, Scott, have you, are you tracking these? This is 26. Back? This is 26. Really? Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, go there. Give us a, give us that like, thumbs up button because that, uh, you know, helps the algorithm, gets in front of, you know, more people who, who might find this useful. And that's what we're trying to do with this show to you know, speak to those military retirees who are coming out, haven't had a chance to address all this stuff because usually you're a career in the military, you got a lot going on. There's a lot of stressors that get dropped in your plate in uh, at one time. And and two of those stressors are one, getting a job and figuring out what you want to do when you grow up. That's what we hear often. But the other thing is, what's the point of the job? It's to get income and replacing the financial security or certainty that we had in the military while sacrificing you know, outside opportunities in many cases, it is a secure opportunity. And so we know that's coming, but there comes times in the overall economy, things that are outside of our control that add even more stress and uncertainty. And so given there was a, a little hiccup in the stock market and it gets in the Mr. news Little. and, and the financial Little. fear, I mean, it's already bounced back, you know, but sure. they call it a dead cop bounce, you know, the dead cap bounce. Yep. <laughs> so yep. there so you it's go. back up to where where it was, but you know, that could just be a precursor of things to come. And a healthy market correction isn't uncommon. I'll I'll throw this chart up just real briefly. Just to kind of remind people these things happen, of course. And unfortunately, where else can you put your money? You gotta uh, most people are participating in some capacity, whether it's retirement accounts. But this is more than just investing. We're not giving investment advice today or anything like that. We just want to recognize that this has happened before. And I thought, Mike, given our ages and, and our audience and kind of you know, where everybody's been at, we can all remember back to 2008 when there actually was a you know real crisis on you know uncertainty and so we've we've got that in our past it's not like we're talking about the great depression you know just some story back there so just to kind of broad brush you know the topic of the of the week since it's in the news yeah yeah what are your kind of thoughts on on the financial uncertainties out there you know, i love the intro that you just kind of laid out there for members right it's you know as you step into your career progression right or transition right yeah, a big part of that is, you know, generation of revenue, right? Uh, you know, your next step. But it's more than just generating it, right? I think you would agree that it's the structuring of it, what you want to do with it. How are you going to either put it to work for you or how are you going to leverage it to protect what you've already put in place, right? What are other answers as you're the expert in this space, right, you know, SBP, right? What do I do with my TSP, right? As these can be stressors, especially like many of us that wore the uniform and spend a life, right, in service. Often we put these things in motion, Scott, and I've had this conversation with you before, you know, and it's just you set it and forget it, right? I mean, and it's all of a sudden now some long amount of time has gone by and now you're having to come back and revisit this thing, that has just been on autopilot, for lack of a better analogy, for years, right? Years. And it can be a little bit of a stressor. Well, can I just leave it alone? Can I do this? Is that really the best, you know, in my case for this next step I'm getting ready to take in career progression? So, you know, that's that's part of it. But yeah, you know, as we were talking before the show, right, if you kind of look back at these you know, challenging times like back in 2008, right? You know, what do many of us remember, at least in my case, still well-founded in a life of service, right? 
So I don't want to say being in the military makes us immune to all of that. It's certainly, you know, we can see it. We understand what's going on. We certainly are planning for the future. Many of us do have savings in various different capacities, investments, and things like this. So you see the impact of that. But at the same time, you know, and and again, I know this is somewhat of a sensitive subject because we're not completely immune to these kind of things. But, you know, we mentioned job security, right? I don't know what you think, Scott. Like, I, you know, wearing the uniform, it's not to say that that might not come to an abrupt end rather rapidly, but the chances are, right? I mean, we do have some level of job security, but as we find that members make this career progression and step into these times, and now you're starting to see two things, right? You're starting to see amount of runway you have in front of you, earning potential. How much time do I have left, right, to earn? And then you start to realize that, hey, this does have an impact, you know, on your life, right? As you pursue these kind of things and you do feel it, I think, in a different way than when you're wearing uniform on the inside, if that makes sense, right? Um, yeah. Yeah. And again, you're, you're not immune to it. We do have some job security, right? But uh, yeah, it, it feels different, I think, for, for most members as they're uh, looking at a time like that, you know, out of uniform now on the civilian sector. And I think most of our members, and I know you target it this way, most members, you know, Blue Water, if you look at our membership, we are about that, you know, mid 50s, you know, 06, you know, we've got a high 25%, you know, 05. So, you know, almost 80% of our throughput, our membership is that 05, 06 stepping through and getting ready to step into career progression. So, you know, they're very excited when we have the 10 year conversation with them. Hey, you're stepping into this new phase right? Let's look at a 10-year block period of time, you know, not only as you pursue your next success, your earning potential, but what can you do with all that revenue in that period of time? Because that really starts to kind of be, and I'm not saying that they're not going to work longer than that, but that's a very nominal figure. I mean, is that pretty much aligned with conversations you have with members? Yeah, because what I've basically seen over the last 15 years and and working with retirees when they're coming out, even the best savers pales in comparison to what can be made in post-military income streams. Sure. So, you know, to bank, hey, I'm just going to have this retirement account and what comes what may, you know, it's going to it's going to be a big nest egg. Like, yeah, of course, you know, to have savings, we got to do that. But it's really, really hard to stay disciplined over 30 years, even if you get it on autopilot, then you don't know what what opportunities you might have missed out on to, you know, gotten in on Google early or whatever it is. And so it's impossible for everybody to be their own, you know, investment guru, especially when you're competing against the big money managers out there. So. The only game in town oftentimes is things like thrift savings plan, 401k, in using some sort of money management and just seeing how the market does. And hopefully when you're getting out to actually use the money that it hasn't crashed. But since that's all out of our control, you know, it, is, it just right? it just yeah. really is. We can have we can organize the stocks and bonds and manage it over time. And then they're going to change the interest rate on a whim or they're going to just print trillions of dollars and the inflation is going to go up. So. What we can control are those next 10 years to really find a good fit, try to make good income. But that's where I hear most often, hey, Scott, I just want to take advantage of this opportunity to really you know, maximize my streams of income. And that's the advantage of having the pension, the VA disability, along with a second career. But being OK with you know, the other uncertainty that's coming right now is might not land that job right away, not, might not be able to have confidence to put money away or even worse, maybe I need to use the money I've saved. But unfortunately, because I've only been saving for retirement, all that money has been locked into accounts I'm not supposed to touch until age 60 or 59 and a half is the, you know, pre the non-penalty age. So what I advocate in addition to, hey, go get get more money is this is why we call it the war chest strategy. You know, build up a war chest to give yourself that asset, you know, that buffer zone to not just have more emergency funds. They probably already got that. But to have an opportunity fund to give yourself a chance to use money in those 10 years if something else better pops up and you need some moving room to uh, either find a new job, start a business, additional 
investments on the side that aren't a traditional investment because those doors start to open up, especially if you are. And because here's what I hear when these types of things happen. You know, people say, oh, I want to get out of the market. I've I've saved this much. I don't want to lose it. And so people, right. maybe they go to cash or they have they reduce the risk in their portfolio and then the market bounces back and they end up missing that. And so yeah. since, you know, that is just, you know, adding the stresses of, you know, trying to you know, make those decisions. So, yeah, I think you're right. You know, those next 10 years, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that's why you focus on that. And you also focus on, hey, you know, if you do go through the Blue Water program and get some help and get some alignment, the chances of getting that income quicker, maybe negotiating a little higher is going to uh, work in your favor. And, and again, aside from the, you know, financial investment strategy or strategies to protect as you, your words, hey, I've got this war chest, you know, how can I leverage income to protect what I've already built and diversify some of these things? And and I love your approach, you know, for the listeners out there, right? What I would say is, Scott, your approach has always been very mathematical, right? Uh, let's just, this is, let's just remove the emotion from it. I've shared with you my own personal experience when I went through my transition, right? And discussions on SBP. And again, not to turn it into a discussion whether you should or shouldn't. That's all very, you know, personal and tailored decision to the individual. But I wasn't the recipient of a very non emotional, mathematical discussion. I was the recipient of a very emotional, hey, you know, there was a big push that you guys just need to do this. And, you know, I just didn't appreciate the approach. And in my own case, I made a decision, you know, that was not, you know, informed. And I love your approach that you spend with our members. It is very informed, right? Let's talk about the math. Let's take a look at this, right? In this period of time, you know, with some earning potential in front of you, what what is is in the realm of possible in this time period, right? And I love how you you approach that. But, you know, for also kind of like you opened the door and you alluded to this, you know, for Blue Water members stepping into career progression, you know, there's some other things to think about, you know, leading indicators, the market going through big changes like this, you know, as you're sipping, you know, a cup of coffee and you're watching the morning news or whatever it happens to be, right? As you are stepping into career progression, there are other ramifications. It's kind of like what you and I talked just briefly before the show, pre-show discussion. I said, man, if you are stepping into career progression and it's been your life desire to go to work for Intel tomorrow, Ooh, I'm going to tell you, have you seen the recent, you know, story on layoffs, man, they're letting 15,000 people go. Right. And so the conversation segues to, well, what do you say, Mike, that you don't like Intel? You don't think I go, no, 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 no. It doesn't have anything to do with what we like or what we don't like. It goes to mindset. Right. And you are likely to discover, hey, I'm still going to tell you to chase your dream if that's where you want to go and what you want to do. But you may not get there in the next 120 days, right? It may mm -hmm. take you longer than four months to pursue or turn that vision into reality. But look at the big stories we've seen, right? In the tech sector, it just continues to roll out. Not long ago, what? Meta let 11,000, or Facebook let 11,000. Really? Amazon has let a lot of people go. Look at the recent uh, Google story that just came out. They're challenge. I know they're challenging this ruling that the you know that oh, was the monopoly like, ruling. Yeah, the monopoly ruling, right? Interesting. Think, think about the impacts you know that that is going to have, right? Microsoft is going through some of their similar challenges as well. Look at Boeing just hired a new CEO. When we say to do your market analysis and to do your quantitative deep dive, understand what's going on in the industry and the landscape that you may be interested in pursuing, right? And this is where it matters to you in your next success to ultimately generate revenue for some period of time, right? You have to take a look at that, right? And it goes to the mindset, right? Hey, historically, I know a lot of people that have landed with this company X, Y, or Z, but now company X, Y, or Z is going through some major challenges, is that going to affect my timeline as I pursue this company? And the answer may be yes, maybe it's no. But the point is you have to look at the environment before you just jump in. Does that make sense? I mean, these changes in the stock market and things like this, they have real implications, especially to members who are making that 
that next step and pursuing some industry or company that is affected by these changes, right? Um, an interesting one that, again, you and I teed up just briefly, if you are way interested in the energy industry and the energy industry is just very exciting, right? Well, I, again, not to turn this into a political discussion, that's not my intent here. I don't want to go one side or the other, but we have, right, the potential I mean, you you know what the issues are. They're polar opposites, man. On one hand, you've got, you know, an administration that wants to make America energy independent and we're going to drill and we're going to open up all these other kind of things. And then you got another side of the administration to say, no, 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 we're not going to do that. It's going to be renewable energy and solar panels on your roof and wind farms and, you know, whatever, all that stuff. It's same energy industry, different approaches, different sides to this. If you don't think that that may have some impact on the oil and gas energy industry or even something here locally in the Hampton Roads area like Dominion Power or some of these kind of things, right? Depending on our government and how it is driving and maneuvering, those are impacts that could affect Blue Water members in pursuit of their next success just based on policies that are being outlaid there. So, I, again, I'm not trying to say live in fear of these things and, hey, this has been my lifelong dream to go do this thing. I'm not saying come off your lifelong dream, but you better have the right mindset and you better understand what's going on and changes to the landscape, right? Because it's it's certainly likely to have an impact on the amount of time required for you to to make that next step. Does that make sense? I mean, and we spent yeah. a lot of time talking about that. Well, let me let me ask you this, because often you hear chaos creates opportunity and you hear something like 15,000 job laid off. Like what, what kind of jobs are those? Are, are they going to be line workers or I don't mean, it's, I it's a, these companies, these companies are so big, it's possible to even fathom how they could have you know, thousands, tens of thousands of employees. Like I have, it's like, oh, we just, we don't know what they do. Um, yeah. Like how, how do they do that? You know, how big is their executive team? Like in why is that the easier layoff than a line worker, for example? But, you know, from the mindset perspective, can this kind of chaos create opportunity for retirees to, you know, shift how they're thinking about things? You know, I think so. Right. I mean, and let's look at it not from a negative, but maybe let's look at it from a positive. Right. As you're seeing these shifts, you know, as maybe one industry may be impacted negatively. Right. Are there other industries that are impacted positively? Right. And moving yeah. in an upward trend. And those are exciting opportunities as well. Scott, you're like, hey, I'm looking at, you know, let's just say, for example, startups in the defense industry. Look at companies like, you know, Anduril. Look at companies, you know, that, that are stepping into that typically, if you think old, big, lethargic moving companies in the defense industry, you know, and I'm reluctant to kind of name names here, but you get it, right? The old dinosaurs that aren't very agile. And now you have a new vibrant company which is well-funded in a startup led by an individual who doesn't approach the defense industry historically like some of the old, well-established players do and is much more agile and use of off-the-shelf technology happens very rapid and I can deliver results quicker, you know, under budget with a product that for all intents and purposes pretty much works and meets what the government needs from it, right? Right. But that's exciting, right? Is a, in a very agile manner. It's not going to be bound by these things. So as you look at these industries, you know, where one is challenged and maybe others are thriving, right? That can be, you know, for members stepping into career progression, you're like, hey, I'm interested in this industry, but I like how this company is being agile and pursuing this. Maybe I want to look at them, right? Yeah. But it can be exciting, right? The, I think the point is, I would just sum it up like this. Look before you jump, right? I mean, I think that's fair. Look before yeah. you do. Sometimes we, we get too confident these companies are are big and robust and and yeah. they're like, kind of like the military. It seems like the military and they can be as stable, but military is not going to do mass layoffs. We might do some downsizing, but we understand we're probably the ones uh, managing that at this point. So uh, okay, I think that's a that's a good way to look at it. And then the last thing I would say, you know, for our members. This is yet again a reinforcement, and we put this out at every cohort we do, Scott, and we try to reinforce it, but it's, it's, it really is hard for our members to adopt this, and the bottom line up front is never stop looking, right? Yeah. You know, you're stepping into a new phase of your life. You're never going to stop looking. Hey, here's a newsflash for everybody. You don't have 
a placement officer, you don't have a detailer, you don't have a community manager, you don't have a monitor, whatever your brand of service is, assignments officer, whatever it is, you don't have any of that in your life anymore. 100% of all of that rests on your shoulders, right? So you never stop looking. So just because you land someplace and you get a job and you're now pulling in revenue and then on your side, I'm engaging with Scott, I'm figuring out how to build the war chest, I'm figuring out how to protect you know, what I have right? It's the structure of the revenue that's coming in is equally as important as the revenue itself. But here's that newsflash. You're never going to stop looking. So what does that mean? That means you continue to be building your network. You continue to show interest into other opportunities out there, maybe other industries, maybe other companies, right? You continue to have an interest in that. We have had members that landed, right? Received an offer, accepted an offer, went to work for a company. And in short order, due to some of these fluctuations we're talking about, have found themselves now thrust back out into a career progression again, right? Due to some of these changes that we're discussing here. So, and now they feel like they're starting all over. Well, it should never be starting over, right? You're going to start once and you're going to continue to do these things I get it. Are you ready? Here's this word forever, right? And, uh, you know, you hit the nail on the head when we're wearing the uniform. Do we all really have time to prep for this next step? Most of the time, no, right? We put ourselves last. Our loyalty is to the job, to leadership that we're serving at that point, to the team that we're with. Man, I'm going to do this to the bitter end until all of a sudden, We're like almost out of time, days, right? And then we go, oh man, I got to get prepared to get a job, right? Here at Blue Water, we recognize that, right? And part of us building this vibrant network of like-minded senior leaders who are now stepping in and making up the Blue Water network that now spans hundreds of companies across many different industries with keen insights that we have into all of those, we can give members a very quick inject into that network, right? Because we know they don't have time to build it themselves. See, I think that's the opportunity that they have working with Blue Water to not get stuck in the weeds of, oh my gosh, the stock market's crashing or this company's lost or they just did a bunch of layoffs because that's all in the news. That That's coming later after it's already happened where you're, given the ability to connect directly with somebody that's already in the company, can they probably give you some heads up? Hey, this actually looks like we're growing over here or could be we're doing some downsizing before just waiting uh, to see if it's going to happen. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we've had members that have landed squarely with some really good companies. In fact, we had just had a member out in Seattle not too long ago, landed with a consulting company out there that was not long ago, acquired, merged and was acquired by another company. So not only did they they land, but now all of a sudden they have to navigate, oh my gosh, our company's being acquired by another company, which is, there are some awkward challenges in that. If members haven't been through that and you're curious about it, I'm happy to have a conversation with you offline. In fact, I can put you in touch with some of our members who have navigated that and understand what those challenges are. Uh, So there's some unique things. But again, the landscape, right, we're coming from, and again, don't beat me up hard on this. I, you know, I, I want to say fairly stable landscape in the military. I get it. There are drawdowns and sometimes, you know, we offer early outs and some of these things. But for the most part, right, the environment was fairly, I, I would use the word stable, if that makes sense. Right. I mean, I get it. We, we travel. We do a lot of things. We're in the military. We do this. But your job security, you know, is pretty good. Right. Uh, that, for the that LAS. <laughs> Stepping into this new environment and to your point and the whole point of the discussion here, right? You're living in an environment, I think, that is potentially more affected by a lot of the changes that you're talking about here, right? Yeah. Um, Companies get merged, acquired, right? Opportunity goes away. Company goes through big layoffs. Maybe companies go through big growth spurts, right? There's opportunity. You got to be looking for that as well, too. But again, I come all the way back to what would we tell our members? Look before you jump, right? That's important. Look before you jump. And we talk about it in the market analysis phase as a quantitative deep dive. That's a college kind of deep dive 
book report kind of thing. You know what's going on in that industry. You know the strategy and the outlook. And is it a healthy environment, not a healthy environment? Understand, right, it, it, what it looks like before you take a step that direction. And most importantly, is it going to preserve, right, the big rocks in your strategy, right? And if all of that aligns and it looks good and the healthy and the environment looks healthy and it's a good fit for you, then by all means, let's target it and let's pursue it. But if it's a some company that's going through some big changes, I'm not saying let go of your dream and you don't want to follow it. All I'm saying is, hey, you may need to adjust your mindset, right? That company's going through a massive layoffs and they're on a hiring freeze. That may not become a reality in your life in 30 days, right? You may have to take like nine months to a year until a company works through that. And we've had members that have experienced all of that, right? And so uh, look before you jump is what I'd say. Yeah, I think the moral of the story today, you know, if we're going to do quantitative analysis, typically quantitative analysis is what you're doing with the financial advisor, looking at the stock portfolio, which, or if you're doing your stock analysis, which one should I buy? Which fund is good? And the reality is, if you're looking at the quantitative analysis of your new opportunities uh, to replace your military income stream, that's where you can have more control over yeah. and give yourself you know, something more positive to look forward to versus just seeing what the market's going to do. Got to play both games, of course, but don't let the one stress you out when you can really take better control of your you know, financial opportunity yeah. over those next 10 years because these things are going to happen. So I think here is just to be a place to say, hey, let's take, let's acknowledge the emotions, but recognize there's people we can talk to that have been through various situations and we want to be a resource for that. And as such, Mike, let me show real quick this new webinar I'm going to launch, which oh yeah, kind of, I'm calling it the, uh, the war chest strategy for a wartime economy because I'm in the insurance industry. Uh, you, we're always about risk <laughs> management. And after 2000, I mean, this goes back to kind of my story a little bit. You know, when I got out in 2008 and, you know, I did not retire. I got out as a newly pinned or no, I was still in the reserves. Um, I was 03 when I got out. And so I, I needed to get a new job and ended up in the financial services industry. And right then is when the market crashed. Like literally the month I, I started, Lehman Brothers collapsed. And I said, oh, who's really? Lehman? Is I that... said, who's Lehman Brothers? Like oh, I, had, my gosh. Yeah. I had, I had no idea. And that was a you know, big the, the, the firm I was with, you know, all the clients are calling in, you know, my accounts are dropping. What do we do? Get me out of the market. And it was super stressful for all. The firm I was with was all former military officers. So I was looking at them like my senior leader because they're all old guys at the time. Yes. I was only 30 years old. And so I'm looking at them as, all right, what do we do? And they, you know, it, it was nobody knows what to do when the markets collapsing and they're printing money. And, you know, it was a crazy time in 2008. I think we kind of forget because it's been pretty good the last 15 years or so. Now, that could have been manufactured a little bit, but either way, retirement account values went up, nest eggs went up, baby boomers were happy baby boomers kept right. spending. But the baby boomers aren't going to be around forever. And uh, their assets are going to have to transfer. Fortunately, a lot of that's being transferred and kind of out into the uh, uh, ether, so to speak. But um, it also means there's not going to be as much spending and there's not as much money available to invest in the market. So it, there's just uncertain times. And so we see this coming. Everything's cyclical a little bit. And so that's what the insurance side of the house is is for. And so that's what our webinar is about. We're going to talk about some of the demographic changes, you know, how that impacts us, how taxes impact this stuff, but ultimately how this ties back to the situation military retirees face when really actually trying to answer these questions. This is what I hear most. I don't hear, hey, Scott, how do I invest my money better? I mean, yeah, there's always a little bit of that, but it's really about first those emotional things. I don't yep. know what I want to do when I grow up. I don't know what I don't yep. know. And then a little bit, how do I? How am I doing financially? And what I nine yeah. times out of ten, I'm saying you're doing great because you did the career, you earned the pension. Now yeah. go get with Mike and Blue Water, and you answer those other two questions, yeah. um, so you can find a good fit. And then that's that's what the control is about. And what we want to do is take the financial, the risky stuff off the plate for for some of your benefits or your assets. Th some of that uncertainty, we can help you remove that stress so that you can deal with you know, finding what you want to do next. So you don't have to worry about these stock market declines as much. But No, but I, I love your approach on it, Scott, right? Because it, it's 
again, the way it resonates in my mind is it's not just right securing some follow on you know, a revenue stream, right? In pursuit of your next success, but it's what you do with it, right? It's the structure of it. And yeah, I mean, there are a lot of legacy institutionalized programs that are available out there, but I would use that word legacy, institutionalized, dated, right? There are many new, more modern, flexible options, right? And I love how you approach this, right? I mean, you know, they give, give the member a lot of flexibility, right? in what to do with this, you know, investment of revenue as you structure it right in your next phase here. And, uh, and I love the discussion out there. This looks like a great discussion that you're getting ready to kick this off. So just tell us when are you going to launch this and when are you going to do this? Yeah, it should, it'll be on our website uh, available anytime. It, It goes in good with the books as well and should have it up today or tomorrow. Wow. And I'll put the links out there and It'll be the main thing I point people to as they're thinking about working with us because I lay everything out we do so they get their questions answered. And that right. way, when we do get on a phone call, we can get right to it and address what are your pressing concerns based on your time. Because everybody's coming in at a different mm-hmm. your time frame perspective on things. And unfortunately, most of the info when you're going through a TAPS program or any traditional you know, career transition program, they're putting you all in the same box. Oh, you were in the military? Okay, so you were going through this. Yeah, but in what order and in what priority? That is going to be super individualized. So, you know, at some point we got to say, maybe it's time to stop following the structured approach of what the military thinks is best for me or some organization. And I'm going to have to you know figure it out myself. So right. adding some certainty around the financial side of it is, of course, you know, the big uh, question here. And when we can't know if we're going to have a job, we can manage what we've already built better. Whether whether that means being more efficient with uh, SBP or TSP decisions, just making sure you've got the right one for you so that you're not worried about it. Or it's figuring out what am I doing with my overall financial strategy? I haven't had a chance to look at this. How does this tie into the new job? You know, maybe I'm not, don't need to be as concerned as I thought I needed to be. And that's why I love having those kind of conversations of people saying, listen, yeah, we can do all the quantitative stuff and run the numbers, but first let's just address the elephant in the room and and saying, do you even have a problem or is this, you know, really a better opportunity? I think I get to tell that second story a lot more often. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that makes that, that's why I get up every day. It's more fun. I don't have to freak everybody out. No, Oh, and it, and it's a great value add, right? And uh, I love the service that you're bringing, uh, especially to the membership that you're bringing it to, right? I mean, and, and again, you and I have chatted about this, right? This is why I think our relationship works so well, right? You know, we value the same membership base. We value, you know, that same demographic, but the expertise that we bring to them is completely different, right? But yet we still know, having lived that ourselves, right? We know that it's needed, right? I fully understand that there's a lot about navigating through, right, this career progression until they land. And even for that matter, even post landing, how to onboard a company, how to ramp within a company, and then all the way up to your first year, how are you going to renegotiate your annual compensation at the end of that first year, right? Like these are all firsts, right? never before seen events that our members work through that we're honored to be a part of navigating that space with them as they go through these challenges, right? And so you bring the insight of, man, the structure of the revenue that I'm now pulling in. Like, it's not just a matter just to earn it, but what do I do with it? How do I build the war chest? How do I preserve it? And, you know, I'm happy to share personal decisions I made with members, but man, I don't have the depth in the space like you do and your team, right? And so I just love the relationship. I think it works, right? Because it's needed insight. Our members all need that insight for sure. And uh, I appreciate it as well, Mike. And I appreciate the opportunity to go up to Annapolis for uh, Mm -hmm. your next cohort coming up at the uh, Naval Academy Alumni Association. And I think I saw there might be an opportunity for a lucky uh, taker. You know, I would love to tell you it's still open, but for the members oh. out there, these Somebody opportunities bit. fill quick. So it is completely full up. You know, Good. we were asked to kind of help fill the last uh, couple of seats at that event up there, which took us all of about maybe five days once we started really advertising it and putting it out there. It's just such a great opportunity in a great environment up there. 
the Naval Academy Alumni Association uh, up there in Annapolis, just doing a fantastic job. Great new building that they've constructed up there, the Flugel Center. We're excited to be, you know, teaching in that space up there for the two-day cohort that you will be a part of, right, up there. So, yeah, we're really excited to do that. It'll be uh, kind of our standard cohort, you know, day one on Wednesday the 11th. And then uh, day two, as you know, we set aside about an hour and a half for each member to meet with them one-on-one. So if they want to discuss resume or social media presence or networking or whatever it happens to be throughout you know, the day prior, if they've got any questions, we can do that in a one-on-one session as we usher them into the enduring relationship of the Blue Water Network, right? So that's just a great way to kind of to bring that out there. And so we're really excited about it. We got some neat events planned up there. It's it's just going to be good. So I'm excited that you'll be coming up for that uh, part of that uh, on day two there as well. Too. I'll hang out and answer questions yeah. as needed. No, it's going to be it's going to be good. So uh, that's coming up near term. Also here, I don't have the calendar in front of me. I think it's August, maybe 22nd, 23rd, right? We're headed to, out to Reno, Tailhook, and uh, we're going to be out there for a couple of days and going to just have an opportunity to, to kind of arc around and just have discussions with members, uh, stay in touch with uh, old friends, see uh, companies out there, continue to spread insight around Blue Water. And if members want to have discussions out there as far as what they can expect, right? What does it look like? Again, never a threat to retention. We're not recruiting people out there. We're just letting yeah. people know that when the time is right, when you, your family, and your Navy family decide it's time for you to make that next step into career progression, we're a trusted resource that's there for you, right? And yeah. uh, trusted for a lot of reasons. We've navigated it ourselves. Uh, we found success on the other side. And now we're just wrapping it all, bringing it back forward to members, to present it in a current, relevant, credible format, right? So we're excited about that. And and Mike, if there is an organization, whether that's a, a veteran service organization or maybe even a company that wants to hire veterans or or maybe ha- have you talk to their HR team or whatever, is yep. the, is those types of organizations can you know reach out to you as well to kind of set up you know maybe opportunities similar to what you did to the alumni association, right? Yeah. Or even command, even military commands. If they wanted to have you come talk. It's a great call out, Scott. And thanks for bringing that up. But you're absolutely right. We're available. CNAF, which is a Navy command, uh, Commander of Naval Air Forces out in San Diego, they had brought us out. Uh, we get a lot of questions. Hey, when are you coming back to San Diego? When are you coming back to San Diego? The short answer is we'll come back to San Diego at any time if there is a command that wants to sponsor us and bring us to San Diego. We're looking hard at going to Seattle first quarter of uh, next year, 2025, and we think we're making some good inroads there. But the same challenges, you're either going to need to find a corporate partner who's going to sponsor you to get out there or uh, or some command, right, that says, hey, I'm a large command. We have a number of individuals that would benefit from having, you know, going through a cohort like what Blue Water offers, bringing them into the Blue Water Network. Okay, great. And we're going to help bring Blue Water out to Seattle, right? And we absolutely do those things, right? Just as the Naval Academy Alumni Association has engaged with us and is bringing us up to Annapolis, right? So we're excited yeah. to offer those opportunities and, and, and we're, I just love the growth. We're slow, steady growth, right? This yeah. is, we're, about ready to end, you know, we're three and a half years right now. So we're getting close to four years and the network's continuing to grow and doing some amazing things. Yeah. I just wanted to kind of nudge, like, obviously your cohorts fill up and there's only so many spots and not everybody can fly out to where you're going to be. But just to remind folks, hey, if you like the idea of bringing this kind of next level approach, talk to those who can uh, provide that sort of opportunity and bring it out to you, or, or maybe there's another, even a virtual way of set in, set in some, we uh, are but an approved government yeah. contractor. We have, you know, we're okay, cool. Cams, we have cage code, DUNS numbers, all this kind of stuff. If your command needs some kind of a proposal, we're happy to work that up in a government format. We try to make it easy for our members. We do all those things, right? So, yeah, we're excited awesome. and uh, we're working hard to kind of get Blue Water listed in a number of resource guides out there that makes it even easier, you know, for commands to kind of find us and secure our services. So, cool. steady growth, man. That's what we do, right? Yeah, same here. I've been 
you know, all this stuff I've been working on to launch, it's been years in the making and it's all, I'm always kicking myself. Oh, I wish I would have set this up you know, years <laughs> ago, but at the same time, I want to do it the right way with the right people and, and not bug people too much. So if you do sign up for our webinar or one of our books, uh, we're going to be starting a newsletter soon. And, you know, that'll just remind people to keep to reach out to us. We you know when it's a good time and fit for them because we know there's always going to be something else coming up, especially during uh, military retirement. And you, you got to prioritize things. So like, um, no, no rush on our end. But all right, dude. Well, um, I think that's good for this week. I'm heading out to Ohio for my mom's 80th birthday on Friday. Oh, great. Good for you. And, uh, Safe travels. Yeah. yeah. No, nah, thanks. Yeah. But uh, on that, I'll be in touch and we'll, we'll uh, talk to everyone again next week. Thanks, Make Scott. sure again to uh, connect with Mike and I on LinkedIn and you reach out to me if you want to uh, get access to the webinar and yeah. I will send you a link. Sounds good. All right. Thanks, Scott. Take care, man. Hey there, this is your host, Jen Amos. Thanks again for listening to today's episode of Holding on the Fort by U.S. Vet Wealth. Visit holdingonthefortpodcast.com to access the full show notes of this episode, including resources mentioned and bonus content. Once again, the website is holdingdownthefortpodcast.com. Lastly, Stay after the outro for a little something extra. Thanks again and chat soon. Bye for now. All right. Hey, everyone. Thanks for hanging out with me in the outro. I always enjoy being here with all of you. I hope you enjoy being here, too. And I always never know what to talk about till I'm actually here. <laughs> it's so funny. I just laugh at myself. But if you really enjoyed this conversation with Mike Wallace and Scott, first and foremost, check out Mike Wallace's company website. Actually, let me look it up right now because I don't have it memorized. This is why I always have it in the show notes. And, I, and fun fact, I don't always like to share links because... When people come back to old episodes, um, sometimes sometimes the guest changed their website. And so it's hard to like promote their website knowing that it may change later on. Like they rebrand or, you know, they get a new domain name, all the things. So fun fact, in case you want to make evergreen content, that is why I often say check out the show notes of this episode because I'm going to share Mike Wallace's website right now, fully knowing that in the future, it may not be the same link anymore. And that is why you need to check the show notes because the updated link will be there. But if you want to learn more about Blue Water Advisors, especially if you're a military retiree and you are, you know, you're looking, you're seeking employment in post-military, you don't even know where to get started, check out the website, Blue Water hyphen, is that hyphen? Blue Water dash, like Blue Water dash advisors.com. You can also Google Blue Water Advisors as well. Or of course, you can check the show notes of this episode because if I said the link wrong, at least you can see it in the show notes of this episode. We really enjoy working with Mike. We recently, a couple weeks ago, actually months ago, now at the time of this recording, we went on a boat ride with him and a couple of our local colleagues and clients and friends. And Mike Wallace is a stand-up guy. Really enjoy collaborating with him. I really enjoy witnessing Scott and Mike's live streams as they do them together. I always feel like they have something profound to talk about, especially specifically for military retirees. We put an emphasis on them because what we have come to find is that when it comes to the traditional transition programs offered through the government, a lot of that is tailored toward, you know, transitioning service members who may not be doing the full 20, 30 career in the military. So it's mainly tailored to those types of people, which is obviously very necessary because that's the majority of the people who transition out. But for those who actually stay in the military, right, who, who do a career, who are 20, 30 years into it, they're a very fine niche. They're a very small group of people. And we're so grateful that with U.S. Vet Wealth and Blue Water Advisors, that is our common, our common client to serve. You know, we focus on you specifically and your unique needs. And we understand the mental shift from, you know, military service of 20 plus years 
to the civilian marketplace. So that is a primary reason why we believe our customers and clients and people are drawn to us because we get it. So anyway, if you want to learn more about that to Blue Water Advisors, uh, check out the show notes of this episode. Of course, if you ever want to consult our company, US Vet Wealth, and get a free complimentary consultation about, about your finances and making sure that you're set up, especially when it comes to survivor benefit plan, thrift savings plan, you can visit our website, usvetwealth.com, free complimentary consultation. You can also join our free portal at... Uh, militaryretirementblueprint.com. If you want access to my free private podcast inside the forts, in addition to what we have to offer at US Vet Wealth, you can visit holding down the forts podcast.com forward slash portal. So many goodies, all free. You all are very welcome. But I don't speak on behalf of Blue Water Advisors, but I'm saying everything US Vet Wealth related, all the things I mentioned, free complimentary consultation. <laughs> Feel free to check that out. All the free resources we have to offer. Anyway, thanks so much for listening and we'll chat with you in the next episode. Bye for now. 